tendency to boast in our own successes as employees, parents, and the various accomplishments we've made in our lives to date. We take pride, don't we, in being able to tell others about the good things that we have done for others. And if I were to ask you if you were a good person, I'm sure that you tell me without hesitation or pause that yes, I am. As a matter of fact, so many people think that they have an automatic pass to heaven because they deem themselves good people. But nowhere in Scripture, Sheila, does it say that being good is a qualifier to enter heaven. The Word does tell us that in order to see heaven after this life, and after it's over, is to be born again. Because just being born and being good ain't good enough. Tell your neighbor, I'm so sorry. But being born Tell them. And being good ain't good enough. Even when Jesus was complimented by that certain ruler in Luke 18 and 18, when he called Jesus good master, Jesus immediately adjusted his assessment and accusation with the question, why do you call me good? Then Jesus himself makes the bold declaration that no one is good Except God. Yeah. I believe that Jesus, who, uh, as Philippians says, being in the very form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. What are you saying, preacher? In other words, Jesus determined to delete deity from his description to put on dirt and then die for the deeds that he did not do. When Jesus took upon himself flesh, he became the framework for all of our faults, failures, and feelings. And although we are quick to quote that I'm a good person, uh, I do good things and I'm good at this or that, we need to be very careful that we don't end up boasting in a, in a goodness that does not exist. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 2, Brother Alex, that all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirit. Ask your neighbor, how much does your spirit weigh? The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 26, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. So before you boast about how good your children are in comparison to others, yeah. before you start pounding your chest in pride over the accomplishments and achievements you've made, or the compliment that someone has given you, before you boast about the job and the amount of money you make, before you boast about how good that mate is you have, before you boast in the strong heritage that you've come from, before you boast in the level of your academia or the number of Facebook and Twitter friends you have listed, let me remind you that behind all the glory, behind all the grace, behind all the glamour, there is a God who still sits high and looks low. There is a God who still covers and keeps us. There is a God who has proven his power to protect, provide, and promote his preferred people. And this text is tailored to teach us that if we have anything to boast about, if there is anything we can remember or recall in our own repertoire, if you will, it should be that if it had not been for a great God doing great things for the greater good of an ungrateful people, we'd be lost, left out, and looked over. But is there anybody in church today in here who can boast that in the Lord I had some good things? Yeah. And boasted I've had some hills to climb by the Lord's. I've had some weary days and shown up some lonely nights. But when I look around and begin to think things 